Gen Pop community, this is Danny Cortez, probably the sickest artist I've ever seen in my life. His sculptures and his creations, they on a whole different level from anything you ever saw in your life. And I need y'all dudes to keep y'all fingers crossed out there. And let's hope we can get this brother to recreate Rikers Allen in his art style so we could do this Rikers Island television series Hazen Street investors out there if you ain't never investing into nothing in your life now's the time Peace to Allah, the black man struggling, black vans come for him All this crime, we divine in the spirit, and wolves in the street Our kids gotta eat, we move with the savage Peace to Allah, the black man struggling, black vans come for him Hey yo, LAZ man, if you need a feature from me, let's collab on a track Get at me, send me an email at thegenpopllc at gmail.com Or send me a DM on Instagram at Real Saint Laz. you heard? Hey yo, shout out to the whole Jersey, shout out to Jersey City. You heard if you from Jersey City, get up in them comments, let me know what block, what av, what street you repping, you heard? Shout out to the bro Pesos, you heard? We got a few stories coming for y'all, this is just the first one, you heard, and it's fire. Get at me, Z-Man, Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. Hey, the motherfucking chase started, they had me on America's Most Wanted. They had all of us on America's Most Wanted. They at my house every day. They blitz in other houses. So I called my dad in Virginia, and they was there. They got on the phone and shit. They like, yo, do we know you in Jersey City? You know, just turn yourself in. I'm like, man, catch me if you can, bro. I'm like, all right. I'm gonna keep it a stack, motherfucking, um, you know, we was outside. You know what I mean? We was in the mix, and, um, Niggas had went in the gun store to get a clip for for a motherfucking tech that we have uh, that we that we um couldn't couldn't get a clip to. So we go on a spot. Somebody refer another gun store refers us to that gun store. So we go on a spot and to see how it's laid out, how sweet it is. Niggas look there and tell like, yo, bro, we gonna hit this shit. You know what I'm saying? This is me and I got three co defendants. Um, niggas go up in the spot and shit. We see how sweet it is. Niggas start plying, start laying it out. So I watch this shit from across the street, this type shit, timing the, the motherfucking traffic lights, be timing what time he opened. I'm talking about, I'm on this motherfucker, I'm watching this dude like a hoe, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was a group, it was a collective thing, but more so, it was me, you know what I'm saying? With the, with the whole plot and then, and then it's making sure anything was going the way it was fucking supposed to go. And, um, the morning that we said we was gonna hit the spot, it was a lot of factors. On why, I, on why I shouldn't have did it Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I got a few simple rules When it comes to this robbery shit I mean, I, really, I was never really no hustler, nigga I didn't really sell drugs like that I mean, I, I'll fuck a jack a nigga in a second though You know what I'm saying? That was my thing I'd rather watch you hustle and then rob you After you get done doing what you're doing like, You know what I mean? So that was my hustle But, um So when the morning came That we supposed to hit the lick I mean, and one thing I always stand by, if, if a nigga asks me in my show, I don't give a fuck, we about to go drill something, steal something, whatever. But nigga asks me, are you sure you good? That's a board mission. You know what I mean? And the nigga Randy asked me, like, yo, you ready? And I instantly looked at the nigga like, a board mission in my mind, but I jumped the gun. You know what I'm saying? Moving off impulse and not logic. I mean, we did the shit anyway. You know what I mean? It wound up costing me 10 and a half years of my life in the feds. I mean. Well, what you so mean? Much. Like, you mean the way he acts, you felt like he was, he, he was, he wasn't ready? Yeah, if, 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 if three of us about to go do some shit and one nigga like, yo, you sure? That's the nigga that's not with the shit. You know what I'm saying? He asked me, am I sure? But you're not sure. That's why you asked me, am I sure? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's it. It's always the person who say you sure the one that wanted to be in the weak link at the end of the shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, so once he said that, me and my Spanish code did, and when I got the, the fucking ported, he know that's my rule. It's one of his rules too. So we looked at each other like fuck, but we jumped the gun. We've been playing this shit for so long. We had other plans. These shits was basically sold before they were stolen. Like you know what I'm saying? So um, I was in my I was I was in my head. Do the shit, but like I said I did it anyway. 
So we ran up in that motherfucker. My man went in there first, laid the dude down. Everybody else came in, laid the shit down. Got off with like 110. Got off with like 110 guns. What y'all ran shit up in there with? What type of what type of hammers y'all ran up in there with? Um, handguns and shit. Niggas ran up in there with handguns and shit. But the way we timed it, we really didn't have to go in there too crazy because he opened at eight o'clock. We was in there at eight, at eight ten, eight o five type shit. You know what I'm saying before. Before his first customer came in the door, we was in there, like, you know what I mean? So I kind of knew, but I don't, I didn't know whether if he was strapped or not. So that was really like a hold up. But once I was in there and I was on him, I was on him. I mean, like I said, shit took a matter of about three to five minutes. Made off with 110 ratchets. What y'all niggas did? Y'all had, had, had duffel bags? Duffel bags. Everybody had duffel bag. And then let me tell you something. 30 guns in the bag is heavy as fuck. You hear me? What they was in a case they was in a case on the wall. They was in a case and on the wall. So niggas bust the cases. I'm saying, my I'm standing over the dude, making sure he he calm. You know what I'm saying, he, yo, just don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Listen, just stay cool. We're gonna be cool. You know what I'm saying? So niggas smashing cases, niggas grabbing the AKs off the wall, AKs, calicos, two two threes, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? AR fifteens, hella handguns. We had like maybe 10 assault rifles and the rest was like maybe 110 handguns. I'm saying, got the shit off. Three to five minutes, got it off. The escape plan, the driver, the nigga Debbie, he was the driver. He panicked. You know what I'm saying? He didn't really stick to the plan. He panicked, driving all erratic, driving all fast, making people look. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not how you get away. I mean, you don't get away like that. You know what I mean? But uh, he panicked, did a bunch of wild erratic driving and shit. We switched cars, got in another car, and um, when we got to the spot, you know, we celebrated the victory, but he really wasn't, he really wasn't happy, and he said that he left, he left a very, very important item inside the car, which was his phone, you know what I mean? So I ain't gonna front, we was gonna kill him that night, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this nigga left his phone in the car, like, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, and um, he knew we was gonna kill him. You know what I'm saying? He knew that that was going. He knew that that was gonna happen. And um, the next time I saw him, he was on the news. I mean, we all we all separated from each other after anything happened. And me and the Spanish Cody, we already we we already made our mind up that we're gonna plug some. You know what I'm saying? And um, that night that we went to go holler at him, I mean, that following day he got he got he got locked up. He got locked up. I don't know how he got locked up. I don't know who. Told what how he got in custody, but once he got locked up, we all had warrants the following day. You know what I'm saying? Police was at all our cribs the following day. You know what I'm saying? I went on the run. I went on the run. I came up to Jersey, dumped all those shits off, you know what I'm saying? And the motherfucking chase started. They had me on America's Most Wanted. They had all of us on America's Most Wanted, you know what I mean? And um, you know, the dude, like I said, the dude Devion, he got caught first and he just he, he told everything. So everything. So everything, bro, everything, everything. You know what I'm saying? Other shit that he had nothing to do with shit. Everything, my nigga, you know what I'm So um So all three like I said, all three of us on the run. I ran I ran into Joe and no on some on some on some crazy shit, just ran into him on some shit. They, they looking for they looking for me. He his name and wrapped up in this shit. I mean, we all hot. We all hot as fuck. You know what I'm saying so. I'm low. I'm running around Jersey. You know what I mean, trying to handle my business, trying to dump these shits off. I'm just trying to get low, trying to focus. They at my house every day. They blitz in other houses. They had us. They had my phone track. Every time I charged it, they was able to get a signal on where I was at. So if I go somewhere for a few hours and charge my phone and get up out of there. Once they blitz there, I'm thinking somebody else telling on me. I don't know who the fuck working. Even if it was time it's charging my phone. Even if the phone was off while you was charging it. Even with the phone being off, if you charging it, it pings off a signal. You know what I'm saying? So I had no idea about that. I'm thinking that somebody, you know what I'm saying, telling on me and shit. I'm like, yo, I was just here at this bitch house. I ain't say nothing. Nobody about me being here, and they came here the following day. So when I got caught, that's when the revelation came. Like, oh yeah. It's like, yeah, anytime you was somewhere, you charge your phone. By the time we got there, he was gone. So I'm like, oh, why? Oh, I bet. You know what I'm saying? So, um, February 23rd, 
they catch me. I ran for like a month and change. They catch me in Jersey City. But they was calling your peoples none. was calling you saying that they was hitting your crib up in there. Up they was they was I was getting calls every day, bro. Like when they, they hit, they there, they at this girl house, that girl house. I called my dad in Virginia and they was there. You know what I'm saying? So um they got on the phone and shit. They like, yo, we know you in Jersey City. We know you in Jersey City, you know what I'm saying? We just, you know, just turn yourself in. I'm like, man, catch me if you can, bro. Like, I ain't, I ain't. And I who, was it? who was it? Who was the ATF? The ATF, yeah. I mean, ATF, uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms. That's who hopped on the case. I mean, of course, that that type of number of firearms missing. You know they was coming, you know what I'm saying? You know they was coming. No, he was gonna be on our ass, you know I mean? but like I said, we was we was we was we was young. I was twenty when that shit happened. You know what I'm saying we was young, and the studio just got hit a few weeks before with the whole dangerous record shit. The studio got hit. Niggas needed to get back. We needed some money. We was about to go to war, so niggas had to get ready. Like you know what I'm saying, so it was a a lot of reasons why we did that. Like you know what I'm saying, a lot of reasons why we did that. But um. So once I got caught, I was the third one to get caught. Randy turned himself in. And when he turned himself in, he testified against me. Debbie Yarn testified against me. Um, the Spanish cat, he never he never said a word. As she was getting cut off, you was like the Spanish kid, the Spanish dude ain't say nothing. You know how the feds work, they'll break everybody up, put everybody on different tiers, you know, off everybody deals and situations and shit and um being that he knew he was gonna get the fucking ported, he knew it was pointless for him to do or say anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I get y'all, if I don't say nothing, I'm gonna get deported. If I say something, I'm gonna get deported. So, you know what I mean? It was, it was one of them things. Uh, he, it was his first time ever in handcuffs, first time ever in a situation. That was a heavy situation. Your first time being interrogated is by the feds. Not making an excuse for him, but, you know what I'm saying? They was able to crack his code. And Randy, the situation with him, he had a lot of previous felonies, a lot of previous convictions in the feds. Your previous convictions is what can get you more time and different category and everything, you know what I'm saying? So he was looking at a lot of time, more so than all of us. But he told on me, he testified on me, put a murder on D, and only it still got 15, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, fuck you doing for, like, you know what I mean? And, and, and the kid, he's, he, that murder stuck with him? Right now, Debbie on and Randy is best friends. Mind you, I'm I'm not from Virginia. I moved out there from Jersey City after my mom's had passed away, and I and I met one of them inside the hospital. These are the first niggas that I befriended when I got down there. Just so happened, two of them was from up top. And the Spanish cat, he originally from he lived in Cali, but he from you know uh, from um what's the um um fucking um Costa Rica. So you know these were the first dudes I I met. I was vulnerable. I just lost my mom's. I'm coming to a new state. I meet these dudes, we on the same type of time. I, I thought we had something. Like I thought we was you no know, man, I thought we was family. I thought we was bonded, you know what I mean? But um Randy and Deep was best friends for years before I got down there. Like kids, godfathers and all type of shit. And um I guess Randy felt like to pay Deep back for putting, you know, for telling him let's put a robbery, let me put a murder on him. And the murder that he put on him was something that didn't even do, like you know what I'm saying? So it's it's like, you know what I mean? Like damn, bro. Like that's how you want to get a nigga back instead of coming home and, and we handling it out here. You want to put a murder on a nigga? Like that was like, that, that was that was you know mind blowing right there. But and he was convicted. He wanted of to that, get home. He was convicted of that murder. Yeah, D right now was doing. He did his. He did, he had nine in the feds. He did his nine in the feds. Um, and the day he got released, the state took him for the murder. Now. What happened with that, Randy put the murder on D in 05. But being that it was a state case, the feds can't give you brownie points for something that the state going to give you. Just like the state can't give you brownie points for something that the feds going to give you. You know what I'm saying? So they tricked him. You go in there thinking that you're going you know, you to get out ASAP. You put the body on, bro. They didn't convict. They didn't even charge, bro, with the body until after he was done with his federal time. So he did his nine years. Came home, then they put the put the murder on him and had to do the investigation. He didn't get sentenced. He did nine years. The case went on for about two years. So Randy wound up doing 11, 11 and a half years over 15 years since because he got the time back when D got sentenced 11 years later. Like you know what I'm saying, so his dumb ass went in there. They they, they don't work him. 
he thinking that he gonna get out early ASAP. Nah, you gotta wait till he do his time first, then go through the promotions before you get your time off. Stupid. So you do 11 and a half, 12, you might as well kept it toe up in the man and came home on fucking 15, you know what I mean? You only gonna do 13 or 15 anyway. And you said one of them is still locked up? You said... He locked up right now, yeah. So for that for that murder out of Chesterfield County, it gave him 47 years, bro. And it broke my heart. I don't give a fuck whether he'll rat or not. It broke my heart seeing a man do time for something I know he ain't do it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Something I know he ain't do. So um, I had a conversation with him before he got sentenced. I mean, his mom reached out to me. This is after we all was home. I mean, his mom reached out to me and was like, you know, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted to talk to you. I mean, and, um, I had to forgive him. Like, no, I man, I, I had to let that shit go because I was, I was, I was home. I did my time. I had to let that shit go because it's other blessings that I need to get. You know what I'm saying, and holding on to that wasn't really going, wasn't really getting me nowhere. So when he called me, I mean, I gave his mom the number. He called me. I mean, he was like, yo, I want to apologize, bro. Like. I did some fuck shit, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't fabricating, I ain't lying on nobody. These is lies, bro. I didn't do this, like, you know what I'm saying? And niggas know I ain't do this. You know what I mean? And I felt it in his voice. Like that was that was like, you know what I mean? That's that's what's gonna hurt him the most is the fact that he's in there for the rest of his life or something he ain't doing. But it's also karma because it's like you tell on niggas and then niggas fucking told on you. you know what I mean, but I don't approve of that. I ain't approve of that snitch for snitch shit. Nah, he told. Okay, we're gonna do our time, and when we come home, we'll we'll all get right. Like I'm saying, period. But to motherfucking snitch on him because he snitched on you, nigga, that ain't what's up. On no level, I mean, on no level was 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 that cool. And Randy will forever be a fuck nigga for that. You know what I mean, forever will be. So I get down to jail. You know what I mean, they said they catch me in Jersey. They expedite me back down to Virginia. I get down to jail. You got niggas in the in the county jail trying to jump on your case, mind you. I'm I'm the I'm the out of town dude. So, how a lot of these South states are, a lot of these states, period. If you're from out of town, you you basically fool with the platter. I mean, niggas don't got no ties to you. So, snitching on you wouldn't be a problem because niggas don't hit on fuck with you like that anyway. You know what I mean? So, it was a bunch of risk for niggas trying to jump on my cake, trying to get me to, you know what I mean, sell them guns and all type of stupid ass shit. That was the scariest county jail I've been in in my life. Not because niggas is on some tough shit, but because niggas is on some snitch shit. What you mean, dudes was trying to act, act um, Approach you like you was the plug for the hammers while you was in there. Right, right, yo, uh, sell me ten joints. I have my man meet you out. Have my man meet your girl, and you know what I'm saying, boom, boom. So one day I go on visit. I got a celly. My celly was some was from Camden, New Jersey. Nigga named Jay. So I come on visit. He he scruffy. He bleeding and shit. I'm like yo, the fuck is up? He like yo, I came in the room, and it was a nigga and. On the tent, they Clarence Bowden, an old head fiend out of, out of fucking uh, Richmond. He was like, yo, the nigga Clarence was in our room going through your mail. Going through my mail. Fuck you mean going through my mail? He like, your brother, nigga was in your, he was in here. We just got into it and shit. Nigga head butted me. Got me, got me bleeding and shit. Like, he was in my mail. And by the time I go down to his room, I'm about to go press this nigga. The police taking him out. So I'm like, wait a minute. So now I'm going through my mail, trying to figure out what the fuck is missing. You know what I'm saying? I got hella mail, and I don't know what's missing, but he was in here looking for something. I don't know. So fast forward, maybe about a month later, you know, you sign up to go to Bible study, Jumar Church, and we're going to Bible study. You just sign up just to get the fuck out the, out the fucking unit. So they like, yo, we doing construction the way that we usually go. We had to go through another way, through another little, like, back way. So we going through the back way. I hear, I'm in the back, and I'm the very last person. It's like 15 of us going. The niggas in the front like, look at Clarence bitch ass in here snitching. It's like a little room with a window. I get to the window. The nigga Clarence and they talking to the two to the two lead detectives off my case. So I bang on the window. Boom, 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 bitch ass nigga. They see me. Oh shit, his face changed. His everything shut down. I couldn't make a phone call. My pin number was shut down. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't do nothing for like 72 hours. So now I'm now I'm fucking tripping. What the fuck was this nigga doing? Uh, he was in my mail doing something, and now he talking to the detectives from my case. He working it on me in some way, but I don't know his angle. You know what I'm saying? So I call home to my, to my fucking lady at the time. Rest in peace. 
I call home, she like, yo, I got a subpoena in the mail to come to court down in, in Richmond. Like, what? She like, yeah. My other little homegirl who had busted plays for me, I call her, she like, yo, I got a subpoena. A subpoena? Wait a minute, for what date? It's the same date as my latest subpoena. So what he did was he went in my mailbox and took two photos of two different females. My lady and another shorty who was, who was holding me down. He told them that his girl met with one of these two women to buy guns from. So he had them come down from court and all this shit. The girl wound up breaking on The girl wound up breaking. I told my lawyer, listen, he never met them girls at all. One name was Fia and one name was Red. Now, the girl that was named Red, she was dark skinned and Fia was light skinned. He thought Red was the light skinned one and Fia was the dark skinned one. So that's what he fucked up at. Now, I mean, he had their names confused. I mean, and she wanted to break it down on the stand. Okay, he put me up to it. He lied. Da, 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 da. But that's just going to show you what type of time and what type of lips niggas are gold to get some time off, my nigga. Like, no, man. Nigga, go in your mailbox and lie and put a whole fucking story together. And they went with it. Like, they went, like, at, at, at that time, I showed that she works for North Airport. Imagine you at, you at the airport or the checkpoint and 10 cops with ATF jackets come and say they want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? So they fired her and everything. She lost her job and all that behind that. Why I'm getting her job back? But just to cause mischief, that's how they came. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know what I mean? So it was that. It got to the point, I swear to God, Officer Young, she used to bring me the newspaper, like, yo, your article was in here. Cut it out. Because they give up a lot of information in the paper and these guys can make a story up. So I cut my article out. These niggas go to another 10 and get the article anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the news four times a week, five times a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I tell you a fucking jail celebrity, like, when I got down there from Jersey, it was like, oh, shit, that's him. Like, shit was crazy for that shit. Like, that was a real big case. It's called that shit a heist. You know what I'm saying? Three to five minutes, they was charging, they was trying to charge us with terroristic shit. they like, yo, where's the AKs at? Where's the choppers at? Where's the, like, they didn't find none. They found maybe, like, over the years, they they found like a total of like twelve guns out of the hundred and seventeen that was missing. So I have a public safety ordinance on me. If I want to go to Virginia right now, I gotta call them and let them know I'm coming and give them give them my whereabouts, the way I'm going, and all that goofy shit. Because they, they they haven't recovered anything. So they think I'm going down there to get right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's crazy. So yeah, bro. Like spooky ass shit. You know what I'm saying spooky ass shit. So. Just going through the, through the, just going through the motions. Just going through the case. So um, it came a time when they, you know, they was like, "All right, we can, we, we can." We, it came time for the grand jury for the feds. They put me and D in the same bullpen. So D like, "Yo, tell them not guilty." I said, "Why the fuck would I do that?" And you testifying, nigga. They put you in the bullpen with a nigga purposely to see what we was gonna do. I mean, but I know they, they, you know what I'm saying? They watch it. Ain't nothing, really nothing I could do at this moment but get more time. So fuck it. Let me just see what's good with the nigga. So he like, yo, I'm going to change, I'm going to change my statement. I'm not going to testify against you. I'm like, oh, yeah. He like, yeah, trust me. Like, trust me. So we wound up going, he didn't testify. He changed his statement. The prosecutor was like, nigga, we had, we had a deal. And, and I think that's why they went so hard on him with the murder shit because he was lining us up to testify against us. And then towards the end, he changed his. He changed his situation up, you know what I'm saying? So they came on the back end and played him. And um, you know, regardless to what, you still switched to the beginning. Even if you tried to, you know, come come back and fix the shit, we'd never be here if you would have just held solid from the very beginning, you know what I mean? And um, he didn't justify against me. They was going to let me go. Puerto Rican nigga never, never said nothing. Randy wasn't in court. And um, they was like, yo, give us 24 hours and let's talk to Randy. So my lawyer was like, yo, how much faith you got in this Randy dude? I'm like, that's my guy. Like, that's, that's my nigga. Like, if they want him to testify, if that's the case, I'm going home tomorrow. And then I done gave all my fucking commissary away, gave sneakers away. And yo, I ain't coming back in the 10. I'm going to court tomorrow. I'm going to leave from court. Y'all niggas hold it down. Man, that nigga showed up and testified against me, man. Pointed at me in court and anything, bro. Like, pointed, pointed. Look, he used his fingers and pointed at me, bro. Like... So that's when I realized, like, like, all right, it's on. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. Well, more first plea they came with, it's eleven years. You know what I'm saying, a hundred and um, a hundred, a hundred and thirty-two months. First plea they came with, hundred thirty-two months. 
ain't really gonna be no lower than that. Now I'm saying to myself, damn, this is 10 and that's 11 years, bro. Like the fuck? But I'm meeting dudes with a thousand years, 500 years, white plus 30, 60 plus 60. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm meeting dudes with these type of years. They're like, bro, take that 11 years and nigga and take it down. You only gonna do 10 off that. You know what I'm saying? So we go signing the plea for 10 years with hard. It's like hard. It's like, damn, we just signed for 10? Like, damn, like, I signed that shit. You know what I mean? Waited like two months, got sentenced. Started that federal bid, went to Fort Dix first, started up in Fort Dix, I bucked 50 the nigga in Fort, in Fort Dix, they sent me to a medium, got a shaking in the medium, I came home from Leavenworth, from uh, Leavenworth, Kansas, I did three years out there in Kansas, so I did three what years in happened, Kansas. What happened in Fort Dix though, you was fucking with the Jersey car? Yeah, now when I was in Fort Dix, now, you know, how the fans just broke up in the cars, you know what I'm saying? Now... To alarm the black man struggling, black vans come for him. All this crime, divine in the spirit, and wolves in the street. Our kids gotta eat. We move with the savage. Peace to Allah. The black man struggling, black vans come for him. All the time, divine in the spirit, and wolves in the street. Our kids gotta eat. We move with the savage. Hey yo, LAZ man, holla at me if you need those features. You heard, collab with me on the song. I got beats too, that's fire. You heard if you're a rapper, you're a producer, you want to put in that music, work with me, get at me. You already know I got that promo on Instagram and YouTube. Get that collab and that promo for one great price. You heard, send me an email at the gempopllc at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram. Send me a DM at Real St. Laz. You're... Hey yo, I'm Fal, focused on understanding life. This is Gem Pop TV. And these are the five Brooklyn albums you better be streaming. One, Smith & Wesson, The Shining. Two, Jay-Z, The Dynasty. Three, MC Light, Eyes on This. Four, Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the Kane. Five, B.I.G., Ready to Die. And yo, make sure y'all check out that Truth Beyond These Walls podcast by my bro Truth Parker, currently incarcerated in Virginia. Be rib lids touching, now we on some John's fussing. Uh, the neck is stupid, rangers electrocuting, raised where the text was booming, gang spraying wet and stupid. I made it on out, I'ma lay it all out. The boss with clout, uh, yeah. Hey, I'm back with my Superman cape on, man. You heard him back in that booth spitting them bars. You heard you wanna collab, get at me, send me a DM. On Instagram, I got you on the collab and the promo. One great price. You're Z Lord. Yo, I'm Fab, focused on understanding life. This is Gem Pop TV, and these are the five Brooklyn albums you better be streaming. One, Smith and Wesson, The Shining. Two, Jay Z, The Dynasty. Three, MC Light, Eyes on This. Four, Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the Kane. Five, B.I.G., Ready to Die. Gen Pop community, this is Danny Cortez, probably the sickest artist I've ever seen in my life. His sculptures and his creations, they on a whole different level from anything you ever saw in your life. And I need y'all dudes to keep y'all fingers crossed out there. And let's hope we can get this brother to recreate Rikers Allen in his art style so we could do this Rikers Island television series, Hazen Street. Investors out there, if you ain't never investing into nothing in your life, now's the time. I was later, nigga from DC, like, yo, you get a nigga at night to come stab me? And it was like, yo, bro, me, you gotta go gun for gun, bro. I mean, you already know what gun for gun means. We gotta go in a room with two knives and we gonna stab each other to death and say one of us don't come the fuck out. I'm saying, and but if I told you I wasn't scared, my nigga, I'd be lying to you, bro. Like, to know I'm about to go in a room with a nigga that's vicious, you know what I'm saying? And go knife for knife, nigga, like, like, I might not make it out this motherfucker, like, you know what I mean? What happened in Fort Dix, though? You was fucking with the Jersey car? Yeah, now, when I was in Fort Dix, now, you know, how the fans just broke up in the cars, you know what I'm saying? Now, 
I'm born in I'm 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 born in Brooklyn, but I moved to Jersey when I was like nine, ten years old. So I'm a Jersey nigga. You know what I'm saying I rep Jersey City. That's what it is. So when I got down four dicks, you know what I'm saying, and I'm and I'm and I'm fucking homies. So I got down four dicks. I rotate with the homies. I rotate with the Jersey dudes. You know what I'm saying. Um, now back home it's more it's more political. It's Jersey, Brooklyn, Bronx. Like it's more East Coast niggas up there. So be more. It's more politics, but the further out you go, it's East Coast. The nominations now. Now it's the coastline from the Mason Dixon line from Baltimore going up to New England. You gotta you gotta run together. So you with DC niggas, you with Baltimore niggas, everybody come together. So when I was in Fort Dix, I was running with the Jersey car and um somebody from Jersey had got to some goofy shit. It was I was up on the plate, the plate came to me, cut the nigga from like the top of his Eyebrows like the bottom of his nose type shit. I sat in the hole for 17 months. Sat in the hole 17 months. Went to Cumberland, Maryland. Went down there. Stayed in Cumberland for about four years. Left Cumberland and went to Kansas. I came home from Kansas. I mean, Midwest, Midwest bidding is different. Midwest niggas is different. Midwest politics, Midwest gang banging. All that shit is different. Everything out there is different. You know what I'm saying? Which, 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 which to me was a good thing because they was, I was able to, me personally, I was on a fucking culture ride. Like, I, I'm stepping out of my, I'm stepping out of my town, I'm stepping out of my coastline. I'm getting cool with guys from all over the world. You know what I'm saying? I just came from Arizona, fucking with dudes I was out in, 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 in fucking Leavenworth with. Like, I rotate with dudes in Cali, Arizona, you know what I'm saying? Arkansas, all up there, niggas I met down that was good niggas. We check each other paperwork, and I'm still in rotation with these dudes right now. Like, you know what I mean? So, I would rather did Fed time than state time to just be limited to niggas from Jersey or limited to niggas from New York. When you gave me access to niggas from all over the world, you know what I mean, so I took advantage of that shit. But you did, you the, you did that whole ten? I did the whole ten. Ten years, six months, nine days. And when you you did you go back to the pen when you came home? Um, no, I I went to the halfway house for six months. Well, I had I had six months halfway house. I did three. I violated just to be back to in the MDC Brooklyn. That three months of MDC Brooklyn was worse than my whole fucking bed. You know what I'm saying? Because I was at the world is born, but I swear to God, bro, that three months bled me in fucking MDC Brooklyn with them little niggas. No wild motherfuckers coming up in there. Wow, um, how, how, how was that shit? Why they sent you there? They just sent you there. They just send you wherever they want to send you if you're from the East Coast. Now, when you get now, basically, when you in the halfway house, you still in custody. You know what I'm saying you. So they sent you to six months halfway house. I did like two and a half months. I had a car. You ain't supposed to have a car. I had a car. You ain't supposed to have more than $500. I had like five bands on me in the halfway house. I'm selling K2 in the halfway <laughs> I'm wilder, bro. I'm outside, but you, you get a little taste of, you know what I'm saying? I, I did everything I, I told myself I wasn't going to do. I got outside, lost my fucking mind, bro. <laughs> came home, lost my fucking mind, bro. I came home 14. 2014. Yeah, on 14. Yeah, man, man. So when they fucking, so when I bought it the halfway house, sent me to MDC Brooklyn. Now, MDC Brooklyn is a rough spot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Go front. MDC Brooklyn get real hands on. Like, first night in the house on the eighth floor, fought a nigga like three times up there. Like, you know what I mean? A nigga I had problems with back in 07. I ran it back into him up there. In fucking 2014, and we got to shake out. You know what I mean? So the Feds is a small place. You're running back into a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't like no big place where you can hide. Like if something up with you, niggas will definitely know what's up with you. You know what I mean? That was your first time well, going to MDC? Yeah, that was my first time in MDC, Brooklyn. Yeah. How that shit was, man. That shit is like, I heard that shit be jumping like Rikers Island. How that shit yeah, was. Bro, let me tell you there. something. Listen, niggas and niggas and. MDC Brooklyn Wild and A floor is the violent floor. A floor is the wild floor. You know what I'm saying? So that's exactly where they sent my ass to the A floor. But it was more irritable for me because you got dudes in there cutting line. We trying to eat, cutting line, niggas yelling through the doors at night. I'm used to jailing. I'm used to bitch. Niggas ain't doing that. So as soon as a nigga cut the line, I'm ready to fucking get to it. The whole time this nigga young coming in, twenty two years old, he don't know shit about shit. He don't even know that he violated to the highest degree. And something like cutting the line, I don't see niggas die for cutting the line. You know what I'm saying? Reaching over a nigga fool, I don't see niggas with screwdrivers in their necks for reaching over somebody's fool to grab the salt, my G. Like, you know what I mean? So the fence is about respect. That, that fucking tough shit to carry you cool, but 
it's more respectful because, like I said, when you got the cars, if you got a Jersey car in two channels, I call for the, I call, I call for the, for, for the fucking car. So I gotta govern myself a certain way, and you can't just do what the fuck you want to do. So you from you from New York, right? From Brooklyn. Uh, so you've been running with Brooklyn. How from the fort? Fort Green. You know what I'm saying? You've been running with. So before you go punch a nigga from Canarsie in the mouth, you gotta holler at me first. You can't just, you know what I'm saying? And if, and if you run over and do it by yourself, the car gon' the car gonna jump on you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's really like, hey yo, do you mind if I I wanna fight this dude from Chicago, boom, boom. It's politics, nigga. It's like, bro, we got shit going on, we got cell phones coming in, we got drugs coming in. We're not gonna let you fuck this up over no fucking poker game, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's really political with how you do things in there. My first couple of months, I didn't know. So if I had an issue with a nigga, I'm just going. But the whole time, I'm creating an issue between Jersey and Philly or Jersey and Tennessee. It ain't just me by myself. It's a whole car that's running with me. So it's it's, it's fucking politics. It's rules. I can't just do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? But so in man, MDC, a- it'd be people from all over. They'd be sending people there that's fighting fed cases or it'd be mostly New York. Well... All over the world, bro. All over the world. All over the world. Everywhere from Hawaii, Alaska. Yeah, Samoans in there doing time. Niggas from Bahamas getting deported. But they, when they get done, like it's everybody all over the world in one, in fucking one place. Versus, versus like Sing Sing with everybody from but New York, all it's, from Elmira, all down. Ain't, you know what I'm saying? But ain't nobody in there sentenced, right? Everybody is in there fighting cases. Everybody in there fighting cases, either fighting cases or coming back on violations. So once they see that I was back on a violation, that I've been down already, now everybody want to ask me how the fans is. Hey, yo, I found that I'm going to this spot. How is this spot? Or how is how was that spot? You know what I'm saying? But young boys coming in, it's on me as the elder. Now, hey, yo, bro, you going in there with that type of attitude, you're going to die, bro. You cut the line when you going, you're going to die, my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's on me now to put them on, to tell them, like, bro, you can't go up there like that. So... Once you tap in with the young boys and let them know, like, yo, bro, I just did a dime, bro. I'm just here, I'm just here for two months. I'm going back home. Oh, shit, yeah. What spot you was at? Now you you find yourself being like a legal advisor, helping motherfuckers with their case. You know what I'm saying? Showing niggas how, how to fucking do shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want you to go up there and lose your life. But something simple like cutting the line just to stand next to your, stand next to your homie. If there's 10 niggas in line, you got to say, excuse me, the 10 motherfuckers. Before you stand next to your bro, or your bro come back and stand in the back with you. But something that simple, you cause a whole fucking war, bro. You know what I'm saying? And get jail shut down. That shit go from jail to jail. So if, if Brooklyn and, and Philly get into it in MDC, when word get out, Brooklyn and Philly might get into it in Cali. They might get into it in DC. They might get into you know what I'm saying? The shit of travel. Especially if somebody got hurt. It's a, that is a political game, bro. The feds is political, bro. A lot of politics, bro. I mean, but it's, it's four different levels. You got it. So you got your camp. That's for the niggas with non-violent offenses. Got camps. Probably like one CEO for the whole jail. So the, the camps is where niggas is leaving out, going to fuck, going to do all that extra shit. While and now niggas can leave, come back. As long as you're back by count, you good. Then you got the low, which is a little bit more security, but not much, not too much. You got the medium, and then you got the max. Like I said, I started off in the low, I can't open the max. The max is that 40 foot wall, guns in the motherfucking, in the motherfucking tower, real high, real high intensity, real intense. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can fucking cut the, you can, you can cut the tension with a knife out that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? The motherfucking niggas that really fuck with the feds, I mean, niggas that really run the feds for real is the DC niggas. And the Mexicans, the Mexicans, they come together, like. I got some good Fed stories on the channel, a nice few, but I need some more. But I got a few good Fed stories on the joint that's crazy, man. It'd be some crazy stories about the Feds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I got a crazy. I got some crazy stories for you, bro. What? I seen some shit in there. Nigga, I tell you a story how I gave a Baltimore nigga a knife to stab a DC nigga and wound up causing a whole wound up having to go knife to knife with a nigga and 
all type of shit, you know what I'm saying, for not minding my fucking business and, and, and staying within the political guidelines of my car, I tell you. What jail was that? This was in Cumberland, Maryland. This is in Cumberland, Maryland. I mean, this is this is my man from fucking BMO who had an issue with a killer from DC. This nigga in the court jail bodies. You know what I'm saying he's a getting anything, so you know he don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying this dude, wild, wild, wild motherfucker. And um, he got into it with the nigga. He like, your brother, let me get the joint. That's my man. I, I gave him the joint. I will let the nigga from DC like, yo, you get a nigga a night to come stab me. I'm stuck, like, wait a minute, where, how the, like, how the, you know what I'm saying, how the fuck you even know what I, I mean, and it was like, your brother, man, you gotta go gun for gun, bro, I mean, you already know what gun for gun means, we gotta go in a room with two knives, and we gonna stab each other to death, and say one of us don't come the fuck out, you know what I'm saying, and if I told you I wasn't scared, my nigga, I'd be lying to you, bro, like, to know I'm about to go in a room with a nigga that's vicious, you know what I'm saying, and go knife for knife, nigga, like, like, I might not make it out this motherfucker, like, you know what I mean, and he going there, I mean, you know, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got cut up a little something. He got cut up a little something, and we banged out in that motherfucker, yo. Know what I mean? What niggas had? That's ice, probably, what niggas had? Ice picks? I had an ice pick in in my hand and a razor on my waistline. You know what I'm saying? I went there with two. So once I, once we started tussling and I dropped the motherfucking knife, dropped the knife, I get, got that razor, start cutting that face up. I mean, and um, I think I sat in the hole for that. I sat in the hole for that for like a year. Both um, of y'all went to the hole? Both, both of us sat in the hole. I think he got transferred first. What they heard y'all niggas getting hole. in the cell and they ran into the cell? Ran up in the room, yeah. Ran up in the room. Bloody cell. Bloody cell. Well, man, the cell was bloody, bro. Like, bloody cell. That's the kid mm-hmm. that you said was a killer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? But uh, I treated him like I would treat anybody else, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, in the fucking back of my mind, I'm like, damn, this nigga, this nigga like that. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? I'm like that. So, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna treat no man like he can't get it. You know what I mean? And we just went in and cut each other up. That's all. Got, I still got a few marks on the arm and shit like that. A few marks on my back from that shit. But that shit wasn't about nothing. After that was over, nigga, nigga, nigga couldn't tell me shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm ready to go night for night with anybody now. You know what I mean? Yeah, did you ever find out how he found out that you gave him the knife? Yeah, my fucking the, the, the nigga I gave the knife to after they talked it out. You know what I'm saying? It, it, Cause he didn't really want no smoke. After they talked it out, he like, yeah, nigga, nigga, he gave me the knife. Fuck you, throw me under the bus for it, nigga. Like, the fuck, that was some corny shit. You saw something? You, know what I'm you, told him, was, you told him about that when you saw him again? You know what's crazy? I found that out while I was in the hole, so I never really even got a chance to let him know. Like, nigga, that was some. Like, you should put my life in danger, bro. Like, no, man, I, I'm, I'm looking you out. The put, the, cause you got the Jersey niggas like, bro, this on you. He ain't from Jersey. Why you giving him any motherfucking thing? Why you giving him anything? He not from the town? Fuck that nigga. And that's the attitude it should have been. But, you know, yo, nah, that's, that's my man. Da, da, da. Being green and naive, almost lost my fucking life. Like, no, man. And that's, 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 you know what I mean? That was one of my personal stories. Like, you know what I mean? I was probably the most, Nervous. Matter of fact, I ain't. It was a time when my shorty on visit told another nigga bitch that he was out there with another nigga. He was out there with a, with a fucking other bitch, and this nigga wanted to go night for night too. Like, know what I mean? So it's a it's a lot of. What I got trust, bro. I got, go, I got some stories for you. He wanted to go knife to knife with you because of something your man said. No, because of something my lady did. Now, what I think about visit? You know, the girls come up there, and when they come from out of town, they stay in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's only one hotel in these small towns, so. The girls gonna wind up seeing each other or after the visit, they're gonna wind up kicking it, probably going out for a drink or uh, some shit. And they tell her, you should tell my show, like, yo, don't get cool with these chicks. But even if you get cool with them, I mean, you, they're not your friends. Like, don't get, ever get it fucked up. Oh, nah, they cool, they cool, they cool, they my girls, all right. So one day she came to see me and the nigga named Animal from North Carolina, nigga named Animal. You already know a nigga Animal, his name fucking Animal, like, you know what I'm saying? So the nigga, um, he on visit with another chick. My shorty steaming. I'm like, yo, what's up with you? She like, yo, that's fucked up. He out here with another bitch. This what y'all niggas do. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, all that shit. So I'm like, yo, listen, regardless of how you feel, you mad, whatever. Don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't your place, that ain't your business. You know what I'm saying? So one day, um, that's on a Saturday. 
niggas come down to my unit like, yo, nigga, animal wanna holla at you. Animal wanna holla at me for what? Like, the animal wanna holla at you, bro. He like, yo, he said, word, yo, tell a nigga bring his knife to the yard, nigga. Bring my knife to the yard, what? So I come to the yard, he like, yo, nigga, check your bitch. Check my what? Nigga, check your bitch. Your bitch told my bitch I was out there with another female. Now that's, I'm, I'm not wrong, but she just totally, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a total no-no, total no-no, total no-no. You know what I'm saying? He, he's a older cat. I'm 25 at the time. He like 48, 50, you know what I'm saying? Some big old North Carolina nigga. So he like, yo, like, you know what I mean? teach a young ass a lesson, yo, you know what I mean? Come on in y'all, bring your knife. I mean, but the politics of the other niggas that dealt with him and me wouldn't let that happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it was a violation on my part. Like, my lady, my lady violated, like, you know what I'm saying? She violated, she's wrong as fuck for that. Had no business doing that. But something simple was, you know, women getting connected and, you know, woman to woman, I'm a woman first, all that goofy shit to get you killed in jail, bro. Word the mother, I would have been pissed off. Know what I'm saying? Like, like she might have been bringing him whatever, anything. Know what I'm saying? And you just can't do that, yo. You can't do that. Know what I mean, you can't do that. That's, it's a no, no. You cannot do that. Know what I mean, I'm sitting in here fighting battles from some shit that you started out there. Come on now, like, dang, dang. Yeah, that was that was probably uh, like you know what I'm saying, probably one of the ones too. Like, this what shit had to do she, with me. I'm, what she I'm, said I'm, when you I'm told her that. What she said when uh-huh. you told when you told her that shit almost popped off because of that. What she said, she, you know, of course, of course, she didn't realize the severity of it. But then, you know, I'm a woman too, and that, all this. Listen, I, I don't give a damn about that. You know what I'm saying you keep your motherfucking mouth closed. You see some shit going on out here that don't got nothing to do with you. you know what I'm saying you keep your mouth shut. You don't do that. Don't put yourself in those situations like that because. You show me, you don't give a fuck about me. Like, you know what I mean? My safety's here. And once again, this nigga was my animal was serving like a 40 year sentence. Nigga with 40 years, nigga, he, he, he don't give a fuck about nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You put me in, you put me in real life danger, bro. Like, real life danger. The one thing he real do give a, the one thing he do give a fuck about with 40 years is them broads coming up to that visit. It's the broads coming up to the visit. Exactly. Exactly. And I got a 40 year sentence and I got my bitch coming up here and your bitch called her and told her somebody else was here. I just lost something behind you. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was like, yo, like I had to fucking, uh, I, I had made a play on some fucking cigarettes and I broke him off. He didn't even know I was, I was making a play. I just hit him like, yo, here, bro. Like, it's all like, you know what I'm saying? Just a, a, a fucking peaceful offering to try to smooth out the goofy shit that's going on right now. And I mean, so yeah, bro, like you'll find yourself in some real life threatening compromising situations, bro. In that, in that fucking federal jail where you would think the feds is, you know, people got this epiphany that it's about uh, millionaires and golf courses. That shit stopped in 03 when they took on that INS contract to, to, to fucking lock up the immigrants. And when they passed that gang law that the feds was going to take the gang members. That's all the niggas that got them gang cases Casting over and all the niggas, they going to the feds because the feds don't. The feds want gang members now, so the feds ain't what it ain't what it was. Like it ain't no re- re- resort or none of that shit. How it used to be, like niggas is fucked up in there. The commissary and the feds suck. The facilities suck. You know what I'm saying like it ain't like the state. You got your personal TVs and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Nah, it ain't none of that. It ain't none of that. It ain't none of that going on anymore. The feds fucked up. That's fucked up. And the higher in class you go, the more violent it is. You know what I'm saying? Niggas dying every day inside them. Matter of fact, my whole girl was just going to see her nigga in the face last Saturday on, on her way up there. Somebody got killed up there. She had to turn around. And they, they probably going to be in lockdown for about three, four weeks behind that. Yeah. And when you on lockdown, nigga, you get two showers a week. So you better pick which days that you work out the least. And you only going to shower twice. Shit is whack, man. Crazy, bro. Inhumane conditions, bro. I tell you, a time in Leavenworth, nigga, we didn't have no water. The water went out. The water main burst. Nigga, we ain't had no water for like three weeks. They bought porta potties on the yard. You got 5,000 men on the yard. They bought five porta potties. One porta potty for each fucking thousand men. No toilet flushing. You got niggas shitting on top of niggas shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it, yo, bro, that's, that was that was some inhumane shit, bro. That was some nasty shit, bro. Like, what jail you said that was? 
this was in Kansas, Leavenworth. Mm. I had a heart attack in jail. I had a heart surgery in that motherfucker. I almost died in that bitch from a surgery that they ain't want to see. Yo, bro, I got stories for days for you, bro. Like, we can go on and on with this shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? On and on. I got a podcast, G War Chronicles, where I touch on a lot of shit. I tell the chronicles about crazy shit that happened in there and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, trust me, like, I got, I got some stories for your ass, bro. Like, you know what I mean? If everybody get their paperwork checked. You got 30 days to show that paperwork. I don't give a fuck who you is, how big, how tough. Every, every jail ain't off that though, but majority of, 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 of the fucking prisons, niggas just want to see if you a rapist, a snitch, or a pedophile. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But you got some niggas that, 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 that be so in tune with this shit, but niggas will follow if you snitched on a state case back in the day. And if that's your man, guess who got to put that work in? You. You find out niggas you've been cool with 10 years, pedophile, you know what I mean? Raping his niece, raping his nephew type shit. Like, you find out some crazy shit about motherfuckers in there, bro. And when you find out that information, whoever's the closest to him, gotta get him out of here. Crazy. Yeah, man. It shit get, shit get, shit get real, bro. I mean, I think this is the hardest part of it all was just disconnecting from the streets, not being worried, not worrying about what was going on out here. I think it might have took me like a year and a half to just stop calling and stop caring about what niggas got going on out here because I got shit going on in here. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a whole world going on inside them prisons, bro. Whole world going on, bro. Sex, drugs, murder, robbery, extortion. You know what I'm saying? All type of shit going on, bro. Some of your toughest niggas in there fucking with the whole Like, shit get real, bro. Shit get real, bro. Shit is definitely a world within a world. World within the world, bro. You could get, My man, you could world within the world, bro. That a nigga can I mean, easily you, get trapped in. Yeah, yeah, but you figure you can have two years going to sell the fighter nigga and he hit his head on the locker and die. Now you you just go to jail body. I'm saying something as simple as a fight. Nigga in in them, in them little ass rooms. With, with, with a, a bed post on one side and two lockers on the other. How much fight do you think you're doing in there? You want to pick a nigga up and slam a nigga. He either going to hit the toilet bowl, the sink, or the locker. Either way, he could die on any one of those items. And guess who got to wear that body? You do. Yeah, you see that all the time. You. See that? Even in see the that streets, all the time. Even in the streets, I be, I be thinking about that just cautious. Like, you, a nigga, you might steal off on a dude trying to not trying to knock him out in the streets and he might die. I got a homie from Jersey City that just came home off of a voluntary man so they think he did nine or eight if I'm not mistaken. Got into a fair one with one of his bros. You know, just niggas just fall out real quick and get a little homie had a brain aneurysm, slipped off the curb, hit his head, died on the scene. You know what I mean? They don't want it. they don't care about his medical his history. He didn't die from brain, he died from fighting you. you know what I'm saying? See, I think about that shit. Yo, niggas be having underlying health issues, and you put your hands on them, they die inside that act. That's your, that's your body, yo. Right? Niggas gotta think about that. Keep that shit in mind. Keep that shit in mind. Out here trying to knock motherfuckers out, trying to go all hard. Hey, so, so good. Why you, why you, why you fucking? You know what I'm saying? Stomping a nigga out. He's why until he starts shaking. Nigga down on you. It's up. You know what I'm saying it's up. After that, now you, you know what I'm saying fucked up. Oh man, so, yeah, I seen that shit, bro. I seen that shit plenty of times, bro. Plenty of times. When I was in Kansas at one time. I think I just got to Kansas and um, old head nigga, old head had like, old head had like, he had a thousand forty eight months. I don't even know how much time that is. I gotta go on the calculator and, and time that shit. He had a thousand forty eight months. He was doing car bombs and shit back in the day, and um. Young boy came in and uh, reached over his plate to get the salt. And old head just looked at him like, I got up and left. So nobody paying any attention, but the real niggas know what's up. Like, yo, he got up too smooth, yo. Like, he might be a situation. So he leave out, he come back in the child hall with his jacket on. You already know, you see a nigga with that jacket on, it's up. Stabbed this nigga in the back of his head with a screwdriver, bro. Stabbed this 
stabbed this dude in the back of his head with a screwdriver, bro. His body was still, body still moving. His, his, his eyes is bleeding. He got blood coming out of his eyes, and his body's still moving like he talking. Probably one of the craziest things I've saw in my life, my man. All because he reached over that man plate to grab salt. Instead of saying, "Your bro, you passed me the salt." You reach over somebody food. This is respect. Like everything that happens to, to people, it be for disrespect. You know what I'm saying. Unless it's like money old or something like that. But majority underlying factor is respect, bro. Like respect can get you a long way, bro. Long way, bro. And a lot of these dudes don't have it. So when they go to when they go to places like that, God bless them, yo. I mean, God bless them. Hope they make it. Hope they make it. Gotta learn to respect people's space. Respect what people got going on. Just cause a nigga a ho- don't mean he won't kill you in jail. You know what I'm saying? That, that takes away nothing from what he know how to do because of his sexual orientation. You know what I'm saying? So you you think it's cause a motherfucker chump that that, that that they won't kill you, like you know what I'm saying? Like I seen seen that before too. Niggas niggas play with them chumps. Chump will kill you in there. Still a man, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I seen some shit, bro. I seen some shit, bro. Got some shit for you. Yeah, bro. Got some shit for you. Be rivlets touching. Now we on some John's fussing. Uh, the neck is stupid. Rangers electrocuting. Raids where the text was booming. Gang spraying wet and stupid. I made it all out. I'ma lay it all out. The boss with clout. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm back with my Superman cape on, man. You heard him back in that booth spitting them bars. You heard you want to collab? Get at me. Send me a DM. On Instagram, I got you on the collab and the promo. One great price. Yo, You're- I'm Sal, focused on understanding life. This is Jim Pop TV, and these are the five Brooklyn albums you better be streaming. One, Smith and Wesson, The Shining. Two, Jay Z, The Dynasty. Three, MC Light, Eyes on This. Four, Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the Kane. Five, B.I.G., Ready to Die. Gen Pop community, this is Danny Cortez, probably the sickest artist I've ever seen in my life. His sculptures and his creations, they on a whole different level from anything you ever saw in your life. And I need y'all dudes to keep y'all fingers crossed out there. And let's hope we can get this brother to recreate Rikers Allen in his art style so we could do this Rikers Island television series, Hazen Street. Investors out there, if you ain't never investing into nothing in your life, now's the time. You know, this is therapy for a lot of people out there and they get to explain the roots of where their life went wrong. You feel what I'm saying? Whether it be their parents was on drugs or they was in the streets raising themselves as kids like, So if you want to talk about you won and you still in the streets, you a loser. You ain't win unless you took that and you took all that pain and strife and that and, 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 and all the trials and tribulations you've been through. You took that and you turned it into something positive, then you won. That's the victory right there. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was telling my. This call is from a federal prison. LAZ, man, I make hit songs. Been making hit songs, man. You heard you want to collab with me? Send me an email at the Gen Pop LLC at gmail.com or send me a DM on Instagram at Real St. Laz. You heard moving out here, man. That's a whole fact. Z Lord. And if you need that music promo, brand promo, whatever it is you pushing, man, my price is right like Bob Barker. Get at me. He popped my door. I say like, yo, he can't breathe, yo, he can't breathe, yo, he, he fucked up. So, swear to God that my mom's, yo, my, my mom's are gone a long time, bro. Motherfucker CEO look me in my face, he come put the flashlight in my face, he's like, damn, you like you're in bad shape. I'm panting for breath, lads. Panting for breath, my nigga, I'm panting, bro. Like, 
He like, yo, it ain't nobody here till the morning, bro. You gotta wait till somebody get here. I gotta wait till somebody get here. Like, bro, you see, I can't breathe, my nigga. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm dying, my nigga. Like. We rolling, your lives was popping. It's your boy right. Pesos, man. Oh, man. Big shout out to all the listeners. You know what I mean? Big shout out to all the Jim Pop gang, everybody out there. You know what I mean? Big shout out to my boy Truth. You know what I mean? Free the, free the bro. You know what I'm saying? Free the bro. Bro be home real soon. And we gonna do exactly what we supposed to do. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, this, 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 this particular story I'm gonna speak on today. Um, this ain't really on no gangster shit. You know what I'm saying, um, this ain't really got nothing to do with, you know, violence or the prison politics. This is more so going to the shit niggas don't really talk about when they locked up. It's you know, the, the fucking medical system in there. You know what I mean, and how and how twisted and fucked up they are. You know what I'm saying. So, walk with me as I take y'all back to 2011 October, but the water main had went out. The water main bust inside the prison. In 2011 in October the water main bust and we had no water for two weeks you know what I'm saying we had no water no air condition it was hot the water it was so hot as that motherfucker that you your pictures on the wall was, was like fold up you know what I'm saying what jail you and said that bought, was again this this was in Leavenworth USP the first federal prison ever built in the world which was uh, first it was a military jail it was a military federal jail, then they made it to regular population. The first federal prison in, in the world, USP Leavenworth, this is this is where this happened at. You know what I mean? So, um, like I said, so when the water main burst, nobody had water. We couldn't take no showers. We couldn't wash our face, couldn't wash our clothes, nothing. Toilets couldn't flush. Like I said, we got men, you know, using the bathroom on top of other men's using the bathroom type shit. You know what I'm saying? It's, shit's falling out the bowl, bro. Like, it was, it was, it was, it was a horrible situation. And health wise, a lot of people got sick. You know what I'm saying? So, moving along, so maybe like a month after this had transpired, I'm right? until the month of October. So, we're talking about September is when the water main broke, and then we're going into October. So, um, me and my little man, Murder One, my man, and one, he from, um, from Nebraska We usually jog You know what I'm saying Five miles In the morning Three to five miles In the morning So This particular morning I do my first lap Around the track I can't breathe I'm like breath Like like I'm, You know what I mean I'm, Shit don't feel right You know what I mean I'm like Yo, We usually fly around This motherfucker track Around 2011 I was in full blast I was getting ready to make I was getting ready to make My way home and all that You know what I'm saying So um, you know, I was like Three four years short <clears throat> So you know, working out was cool. So I'm, uh, I can't breathe. I'm like, all right, maybe I caught a little head cold, or you know, maybe a little chest cold or something. You know I mean? I'm gonna fall back for a day until we get back to it. You know what I mean, but each day after that, I got worse, and worse, and worse. Like I felt, like I felt like shit. Like so, you go to medical now. What you do is you put a slip in. It's called a cop out. All all federal slips, whether it's like uh, you want to put a slip in to go to the doctor, you want to put a slip in to go to the dentist. Put a slip in to go to, to to church anywhere. It's called a cop out. You know what I'm saying so you gotta put it up. You gotta put in a, a, a cop out to go to medical. So I put the cop out there like yeah, I'm having chest pains. I'm having shortness of breath. So they, they bring me in there. Oh, uh, you okay? Take a Motrin. You'll be all right. Anything. The only thing they want to do with a federal prison is either give you a Motrin or pull or pull your teeth. That's it. It ain't no in between. It ain't no. Work. If, if you got to get an 85 to be a doctor, these niggas is like on 76. Like the medical care in there is in the basement. You get no medical care in there, bro. You know what I'm saying so. Um, you talking about you can, you can, this you, particular jail or the feds in general? I'm talking about the feds in general when it comes to medical. When it comes to medical, you know what I'm saying I'm pretty sure you're gonna see inside the comments some other guy. I don't know how to how the fucking state prison operate, but in the fed prison, bro, like only thing they want to do is give you a Motrin. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, take an ibuprofen. And that's not even something they give you. They got to go to compensate to buy that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so, um, so, boom, so, um, go to medical. You can clearly see, you can clearly see, you can clearly see that's something wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Clearly see it. People want to tear and see it. I'm like, yo, like, I'm, 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 it's just it's to the point, yo, I was walking up the steps with a bag of commissary. 
And I like almost fell backwards and somebody caught me like, bro, you good? I'm like, yo, bro, I don't know what's going on with me, but I do not feel good, my nigga. Like, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, if I was, if you was looking at like a status bar, my shit was on like 20% going down. Like, I was really like, like, oh shit. So I went back to medical again, like, yo, something wrong. I'm saying something wrong. I'm, I'm telling you something wrong. They're like, uh, okay, uh, take these, uh, take these pills. So they give me some pills. I take the pills. Two days later, like now I'm crushed over holding my stomach. I'm like, what the fuck? Stomach crushed over. I go to use the bathroom. It's blood in my stool. The fuck? The hell? I got blood coming up my stool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yo, now I'm. Now I'm scared, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh man, like, yo, what's wrong? Like, it's to the point where when I, when I, when I walk, I could feel my steps, you know what I'm saying? I could feel every time my feet hit the ground, I could feel it like all through my body. Like, I'm like, yo, something wrong, yo, something wrong. Something wrong, man. Um, so this is October 14th. The night of the BET Awards, 2011. Yo, I'm shivering. I got a blanket over me. I'm totally vulnerable. It's to the point I can't. Even, I couldn't even defend myself if something was to happen to me. You know what I'm saying, totally, totally vulnerable. Sick as hell. I'm sitting in front of the TV, sweat dripping down my face with a blanket on. I got a blanket on, but and I'm, and I'm fucking sweating. So you know my body going through something, and I can feel my heart beating in my head, like my heart beating fast. Yo, it's beating fast. It's beating hard. So, a CO coming to make her rounds, and she was a cool officer. You know what I'm saying? She was she was always cool. She was always pleasant. And um, and um, she looked me in my eye, and she pulled the plug. Ooh. And when they pulled the plug, when they when they hit the code, that means all the police got to rush to wherever they at. She pulled the plug, all the police up. She like, yo, get him out of here. She said, my eyes are in the back of my head. Like, I was, I was, was gone. So they take me, they finally, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. I missed, I missed the, I missed the step. Okay, hold on. So now, so after I got blood inside my stool, I'm in the cell with a dude from Connecticut named Marv. Marvin um, Spann from out of Hartford. I wake up this one particular morning, it feel like it's 30 motherfuckers sitting on my chest, bro. Like they standing on me. shit, like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, bro, I get him. I get him. I get his attention. He get up. He banging on the door. It's like 2 in the morning. He banging on the door. Everybody, he get, he get, he yelling top of his lungs. He getting everybody up on the tear. Everybody, because after they do midnight count, the COs leave the tear. The seals, the seals bounce. They don't even be around. Like they may come in, do a body count, and then keep moving. You know what I'm saying? So the whole tear banging on the door, banging on the door, banging on the door, banging on the door. Yo, 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 he he fucked up, he fucked up, he fucked up. So maybe like after 20 minutes, yo, seal finally come to the door. He popped my door. I say like, yo, he can't breathe, yo, he can't breathe, yo, he, he fucked up. So, I swear to God that my mom's, yo. My, my mom's been gone a long time, bro. Motherfucker CEO looked me in my face. He come put the flashlight in my face. He's like, damn, you like you're in bad shape. I'm panting for breath, lads. Panting for breath, my nigga. I'm panting, bro. Like, he like, yo. It ain't nobody here till the morning, bro. You gotta wait till somebody get here. I gotta wait till somebody get here. Like, bro, you see I can't breathe, my nigga. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm. Dying, my nigga. Like, like, you gonna tell me I gotta wait till somebody get here? So now my silly, my silly going on, my silly going on. So he's like, man, get the fuck out of here. Da, da, da. He closed the door. This nigga help me, bro. All night, my nigga, my nigga Marvin Spann. If you out there, I haven't been in touch with him since we parted ways. He went to another. He went home, and I went. He went home right a little bit after that, and I went home maybe two years later, and I haven't touched base with him. But if anybody out here know Marvin Spam, Marvin Spam from Connecticut, man, good dude, short nigga, yo, about five, 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 six, short nigga, good nigga, man. 
nigga, help me, bro. Nigga, help me. I said, bro, I just need you to write me a letter, bro. Like, write my father and my lady at the time. Like, yo, write them, y'all. I need you to write them. It's these, this, this, their phone numbers, bro. It may be over for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if this happens, reach out to my folks, write on folks for me, just let my people know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And by the grace of God, I was able to make it to the morning. I went back to medical that morning. They, they helped me in maybe like an hour, gave me observation, did an EKG on my chest, seeing that I had some, some, I had something going on. They gave me some more medicine. I'm telling them, like, yo, I got blood in my stool. I can't take no medicine. Like, I'm fucked up. I can't even eat. I had a heart attack last night. You know what I'm saying? Every time I breathe, my, bro, I mean, I tell you, when I tell you, I was twisted. I was twisted, bro. So, fast forward to when the CO came in. This was like a day later. The CO came in. It was the BET Awards. We watching the awards. I said, I got a cover over me, sweating bullets. Everybody in the chair, like, yo, bro, fucked up. Like, they don't know if bro A's bro got but he fucked up he losing hella weight he throwing up he fucked up you know niggas in jail gonna think the worst so when she came in when she pulled that plug bro they finally took me out to the outside hospital I don't know the name of them I got the medical records and I'll, and I'll post the medical records you know what I'm saying I got the medical records and everything inside the room I forgot the name of the hospital but um so they finally got me out took me to the hospital now you know they can't really tell you where you at because you you are a security risk. So I got a chain on my foot and it's a seal with me at all at all times. So when I get there, I mean I see you. So Doc was like, yo, your heart is beating at 155 beats per minute. Twelve more hours at that rate, your heart probably would have stopped. You know what I'm saying, what took them so long to send you out? You know what I'm saying? I said, you gotta ask them that. Like, I mean, so they got my heart on like five different screens. He like, yo, like, do you know when you're, we're looking for your heart to make this flutter. It's called the ad flutter. I said, well, I could tell y'all what he said. I said, when it's about to be real fast. Like, I could tell y'all, cause I feel it when it's about to happen. He like, okay, that's a, that's a good thing. So I tell him like, you know, I'm in it maybe like 30 minutes. I feel it's about to happen again. They're able to capture all the shit that they need to capture. Boom, boom, boom. He come to tell me in layman's terms, he said, you got two cans of soda, two cans I like, he told me the, the leaders at first I said yo you gotta break it down he said you got two cans of soda of fluid on your heart that's how much fluid you got on your heart you know what I'm saying I'm like how do you get fluid on the heart he's like yo could be bacteria could be you know what I'm saying and I told him briefly about the situation that happened without the water being off and us inhaling the fumes and inhaling people's motherfucking feces smell like that he said it could have been that we had hella K2 and then niggas are smoking K2. It could have been it could have been a plethora of things. We never identified exactly what it was. You know what I'm saying? Then when I told them about my stomach, they ran a cascade on my stomach. So now I got two cans of fluid on my heart and a fucking seven centimeter ulcer in my stomach. The medicine they gave me had to be taken with food. They didn't put that on the bottle. They didn't put that on, on the prescription they gave me in the joint. They just gave it to me and told me to take it. As I obviously the medicine was too strong for my stomach and it was burning the lining of my stomach and the entire time. You know what I'm saying? So that's where that blood in my stool came from. That's where every time I walk, I felt my steps came from, from the ulcer. So now I gotta have two surgeries. I gotta get the ulcer removed and I gotta get this fluid taken off my heart. So I'm in the hospital 13 days. <clears throat> 13 days, mind you, no phone call, no outside contact. Nobody, I can't tell nobody nothing, I can't speak to nobody. But you know, I was in there fucking with some of the nurses, you know, just making them laugh here and there. And one of them, after the surgery, one of them came, you know what I'm saying, came to me with a pen and paper, one of my number, called my dad. So I made one call for you. I'm saying, called my dad, just let my dad know what was going on. You know what I'm saying, but anyway, so um, it comes, so I'm in the hospital for a couple of days, and like, yeah, you can get ready, you're prepping, prepping me for surgery. So, um, it's just weird just being in there with a chain on my foot, chain on my arm, you know what I'm saying? Most of they took the chain off my arm and just put the chain on my foot, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting ready to go down to the, to, the, to the OR. You know, if anybody in here ever been to the OR, ever had surgery, you go in that room in that cold slab, you lay in that slab, you feel like a piece of ground beef on that slab, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that I was in there alone, I mean, this ain't no regular surgery where I got my peoples in the waiting room and the lobby waited on me. I ain't got nobody out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm in jail, my nigga. I gotta sign a waiver if this surgery goes wrong and I die, that it's nobody's fault. You know what I'm saying? Just the reality 
if, if I ain't never had no reality of where the fuck I was at, that might have been like, oh shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, this is real. Like, if I die, like, in jail, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like all alone, my people ain't gonna know what the fuck happened. This is gonna be a huge question mark on what happened. So those just the thoughts that's going through in the head. So I'm in there, I'm in that cold slab. I'm shivering, I'm cold. Mind you, I still got this chain on my foot, though. On the operating table, I still got a chain on my foot. I'm in. So, um, about to come in. Two, two, uh, two doctors come in. They say, yeah, we want to the prep you for surgery. You know what I mean? They said, we're going to give you some overall. So instantly, I went in my mind to Michael Jackson. I know he od on that Pope Paul shit, or that fucking Conrad Murray shit. So I was like, yo, wait a minute. I'm like, yo, ain't that that shit? Michael Jackson died on me. Like, nah, 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 nah. He took way more than this than you about to get. You know what I'm saying? So they give me, they, they add fucking business and shit. I go out instantly. You know what I'm saying? Time I wake up, I'm in my motherfucking, I'm back in, I'm back in my room. Stomach sore. Chest so I couldn't really move too much for like the first three days. Maybe like two days, I couldn't really move too much. And that fourth, fifth day, I was able to get up, walk around a little bit. Still hella sore. Operated on maybe like 30%. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but the surgery went well. Didn't realize that I thought I just had a sore throat or something. Come to find out when they was pulling the cord out of my stomach, when they went and seen the ulcer, when they pulled the coat out of my stomach, they scraped some shit. So my voice was gone. My voice was at a low whisper for like a year and a half almost. You know what I'm saying? At a low whisper. So I got so I'm, 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 I got no voice. <laughs> I got no voice. Stomach hurt. Chest hurt. They like, yo, we discharging you tomorrow. I'm like, yo, I am not ready to go home. Make you ready to go to this motherfucking jail like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not telling them I'm vulnerable as hell. They don't give a fuck. Ain't no insurance in there. You know what I'm saying? They did their surgery. They got me. They got me right. Nigga, you go heal back in your cell. So, um, the night I come back to Bruce from New York, the car got into some shit. Over oh, my homie Dance. Dance got 52 years, I think Dance had 52 years. Spanish cat from out of the Bronx. I mean, Dance. Um, he wound up getting stabbed up real bad. I, I, a couple a couple years back, I was already home. I already got stabbed up real, real, real bad. I was that world for shit. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I mean, Dance had gotten to it with some Kansas cats. And as I'm walking in the back into the jail, I see my niggas moving. What the fuck? So I go back. So I, I got to go to medical to get some pills that that the that the, the that the hospital has sent some real medicine at this time with proper instruction on how to take it. So when I get back to my unit, you know what I'm saying I peep the tension. I got a crutch. You know what I'm saying they, they they gave me one crutch. They ain't had no canes. They didn't give you a cane. So I had a crutch. You know what I'm saying that's what I was walking on because I couldn't I couldn't you know hold myself up. So I'm not even in my room five minutes. For the bros rushing the room, hey yo, we just got into it. So I said, yo, I just peeped y'all when I came in. They like, yo, you might have to check in. Cause you ain't gonna be able to hold yourself down because shit about to hit the fans. Check in. So my nigga, I ain't tapping no door. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and you gonna see in the comments from the bros that was there, they're gonna let you know like this is it's a factual fucking story. You know what I'm saying? I said, bro, that's what we gonna do. I said, I got a knife in my in there, and one of y'all give me a knife. I say, yo, take the knives to my hand. You know what I'm saying? So at least if I, you know I'm saying I can go out there with this crutch, I got one swing with this crutch and I could jump on a nigga and I could at least, you know what I'm saying, put two in the motherfucker and hold him down while y'all, you know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. I'm not tapping in. I'm not checking in nowhere. I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to go on my record ever, ever, ever in life. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, by the grace of God, I think the situation got smoothed out. I had nothing to do with it. I was in my room just waiting for the war to come to me. I already know how it go if my homies get into it with another car and once they all go eventually they're gonna try to come wash me up too you know what I'm saying so so just 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 letting people know that the purpose of this story right here and, and I still have side effects of that surgery till this day I mean like I said I'll post my medical records inside the comments below it's, it's pictures I, I could take I have everything I posted man. I just gotta locate that shit in my room you know what I'm saying but just I just want the motherfuckers to know that you know you know, people get on here, we talk the gangster shit, the war wounds, the war stories. That's cool, but 
the real shit, your medical, your medical history, your medical life, your real life out this motherfucker will be changed. You know what I'm saying they don't give a fuck, bro. They don't care about nothing. Like, you know what I mean, everything can't be fixed with a mo trip, right? Like, you know I mean, like you can really die in there. I know dudes in there that really died. You know what I'm saying for medical issues, staff, MRSA, staff infection was crushing shit. You know what I'm saying the staff infection wiped out. A few niggas in the prison that started from a small pimple went to a hole you could look through and they motherfucking arms and shit, you know what I'm saying? So like, that's basically the purpose of this story, to let niggas know like, yeah, I went through a lot of war shit, I went through a lot of gangster shit, but I also had a major situation, I had a heart attack in prison, you know what I'm saying? I could have died in jail, not by the hands of another man, but from the lack of having proper medical attention, you know what I'm saying? Like, I damn near had to die to get sent out, thank God for that officer, I'm saying who 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 was able to see me and know the regular me and know that I was out of I, I was out of pocket. He came to my rescue, and was able to pull that button to get me seen. You know what I'm saying so I appreciate him for that. I mean, so hopefully the listeners can get a get an idea of just how fucked up the medical system is inside prison, bro. I mean, this was in Fort Dix, Leavenworth, Cumberland, um, Lewisburg Medical. Petersburg, FDC Philly, NBC Brooklyn, all the places I've, I've, I've stepped foot in, the medical system been the same way, bro. They don't give a fuck about you at all. At all. I mean, so that's, that's why I want anybody to know, like, yo, like, you know, it ain't always gotta be the op, you gotta worry about it, jail. It's also the medical system, bro. Like, they will fail you in there. They will not take care of you at all. I mean, it ain't no, it, it, it's, it's no in between in there. Like, it's no, let me look at it, let me examine. It's, it's none of that. You're not getting none of that in there, bro. That last word up. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace to my bro Murder. That that got stories on the channel and fed stories on the channel. Um son was in the box in the feds and he was banging on the door trying to tell him, yo man, I ain't feeling right, I ain't feeling good. And they was ignoring oh, no, they him. walk right past you. Yeah, yeah they, you know, right they past think you niggas in the, in the box is, is 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 losing it and they just trying to get out, you feel mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. So they ignored him, mm-hmm. and son ended up collapsing and, and almost dying in his cell. And um, they had to rush him to the outside hospital. They barely saved him, but they saved his life eventually. And when Crazy. son came home, he sued, he, he sued the shit out them niggas for that, though. He sued the shit out them. Gotta get him. Came home and came home to him. a bag. Yeah, you, you gotta he, get him. Yeah, son came home to a bag, man. I mean, but you know, son, son died shortly after he came home and shit. I had pursued, I had got a, a legal beagle inside to draft up a, 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 a cost of complaint. Just, just so I had that mindset too. But then them boys came right back and was like, "I got, we got some indictments looming over. In case you decide you want to get crazy and do this, we could also bring this up because." Inside my case, one of my mans, one of my close mans, I got caught with something he wasn't supposed to get caught with. And in part of my plea agreement, I was able to take some responsibility for that to get him in the situation. But he would have to come in and do no time. So they, they was able to bring that back. Like, we'll, we will bring this back if you decide that you want to get crazy. So chill out. You know what I'm saying? So I backed up off the lawsuit totally. You know what I'm saying? I backed up off the lawsuit totally. So yeah, that, I did put that emotion in. It came back and threatened me. With it, with it. it wasn't even, even to me, it wasn't even me. It was, they, they, they threatened him, but still, I ain't gonna let that happen. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm gonna take this. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. And I know I could have got him. I know I could have got him. But like I said, I'll take pictures of anything. I'll send you all that shit, right? Yeah, you bro. Everything you talking about is factual, man. I mean, these niggas on the internet, you got, it's like a culture and, and a fad nowadays. Everybody wants to call cap on everything. You feel what I'm saying? People just like to, to to say the word cap, but we don't do none of that over here, man. If 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 niggas over here, if we get something wrong in a story, we correct that shit as soon as we possibly can. But we ain't no, I ain't never thinking that a nigga just coming on here just straight capping for no reason. Especially Facts. if I could, especially if I know a nigga background and know the type of people he fuck with. Like, you know what I mean, I know the type of niggas you fuck with. And I know you don't fuck with no clowns. You feel what I'm saying? That. So I ain't know never that. worried about that. that shit, bro. That's facts. That's what's up, though. That's what's up, though. But yeah, I just definitely wanted to, you know what I mean, to get that, you know what I'm saying, out there. There's no, like, man, that system is just, it's wicked, bro. It's wicked in there. It's wicked in there. 
very wicked. I oh, mean, it's huge. definitely big shout to Jim Pop, big shout to you last, the whole platform. I mean, check definitely check this out. I mean, and it's up. You already know the shit. Hey yo, L A Z, DM me or text this number for promo on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok.